Hello everybody and you're very welcome back to the channel. So yes, in this video we're going to be dealing with the very famous county tractors. Um, we're going to be looking through the history of the county company. So from county commercial cars into county tractors. Um, obviously the rise and the demise of the company and to a certain extent the rebirth again over the last few years. Um, just before I get started, uh, very welcome to all our new subscribers um, that we picked up from last week and the last couple of weeks. Uh, you're very welcome. And of course, to all my regular watchers, all the usual subscribers and people who watch this channel, uh, you're very welcome back as well. Um, so, yeah, we're going to jump straight into it, really. So look at the history of the company. So, so the firm, the county firm was set up and founded by brothers Ernest and Percy Tapp, a pair of former army officers in World War One. They set up a meat transfer company to transport supplies from Smithfield Market for Ernest's father-in-law's butcher business. They found the available trucks too small and converted one to a twin rear axle design to allow it to carry two tons. In 1929, they set up to convert uh, twin axle four trucks to triple axles and for other people also uh, after building their own and running it successfully. Later, they built the kits uh, for Ford to convert lorries at Dagenham, uh, the plant in Dagenham. Ford went on to build versions of the Model B and the 7V trucks in six-wheel form from these county kits. Now, I do believe that the term county, the name for the, for the company, uh, came from the fact that the Ford trucks at the time, the different models, were all named after different, um, different counties. Uh, different four trucks were named after different different counties. That's what I'm led to believe. Now, if there's anyone has any more information on that, uh, please feel free to drop a comment. And indeed, if you have any information at all on the county tractors, um, any sort of history with them at all, uh, please feel free to comment. Um, I know there's loads of people watching this um, who would have been driving machinery throughout the 60s and the 70s and indeed the 80s. And there's collectors watching this channel as well. So if anyone has any information, please always feel free to uh, jump in the comments and leave a comment for everybody to read, not just for me. So yeah, during World War II, they supplied kits then to convert WOT1 trucks to Sussex specifications with 14,000 being built. A small number of E17T chassis were converted and fitted with winches as anti-aircraft barrage balloon launch trucks. In 1957, then it saw the Thames, the Thames Trader was introduced and a kit was also made for these. So the first tractor they were actually involved in was, was a, a crawler tractor. So the crawler design was started after the war for the Ministry of Agriculture with the prototype built in 1948 for field trials. The prototype being on international BTD6 tracks. They delivered 50 to the Ministry of Agriculture uh, by the end of that year. The machine was then offered with a Bray Angle Dozer kit for £1,140 at the time. Some machines uh, were being fitted with Broughton winch, uh, winches for forest work and for recovery work. And, and they could, could be a little bit underpowered. And in 1948, the Perkins six-cylinder was offered as an option, obviously at a price, but boosting the power output from 29 to 45 horsepower. The design being modified several times before the new Ford E1A Major was released. And if I do sound a little bit hoarse, um, or a little, look a little bit tired, um, it is because this is my second time making this video. I've actually made this video already. I have went through the whole thing, uh, spoken lots, and then when I went to edit it, I realized that uh, the sound didn't record. So, um, yeah, these things happen in the world of YouTube and video making, as you can imagine. So, yeah, when County Tractors first went into production in 1948, the first machines uh, that were built, as I said, were the track laying type. This, it wasn't until 1961 that the manufacture of equal wheeled uh, four wheel drive units started. The tractors were based upon the Fordson Super Major and Badge the Super 4. The drive to the front wheel to via twin shafts, which allowed the standard differential to work on all four wheels. In 1968, a six cylinder tractor was introduced and badged the Super 6. Production continued with a restyle to the bonnet and a radiator grill in 1963, and the manufacturer ceased then in 1965. It used a Ford 590 engine and produced 95 horsepower. These first county tractors uh, soon built a reputation for their unrivaled traction stability with many farmers buying them specifically for hillside work. Now, when you compare the county to, say, the Muir Hill, which is a similar type of tractor, all four wheels equal, the Muir Hill was obviously a higher tractor 
um, it had greater ground clearance, it was better for some jobs, but the county was much lower down, it was a lower tractor, the belly of the tractor was lower, the axles were lower, um, and it was more suited to hillside work, uh, obviously it had great traction with all four wheels, um, it probably did suit some of the hill, hillier farms more than say the Muir Hill, or even the, the 1200 uh, Ferguson would have done. The second generation of county tractors uh, was introduced in November 1964. The four cylinder model was given the 654 badge, which was replaced by the 754, which was based on the Ford 5000. And that was in May 1968. The six cylinder version introduced in May 1965 was the 954, which produced 95 horsepower using the Ford 2703E engine until the tractor was replaced by the operated uh, 1004 or the 1004, I'm not sure exactly, maybe somebody might tell me in the comments how it was uh, pronounced. So July 1967 saw the flagship 1124 introduced and that developed 113 horsepower from the Ford 2714E engine. This engine had an unstressed block and so county had to fit their own sumps to give extra structural support to the engine. The last 1124s rolled off the production line in July 1971 and were replaced in 19 sorry 11 it was replaced by sorry the 1164. Laterally County produced the 974 which was based on the Ford 7610. The 1164, the 1174, the 1184 which was launched in 1979. The 1184 was built around the TW10 and that was at 120 horsepower from the Ford 401S engine and had a weight distribution of 3.5 tons on the front axle and two tons on the rear axle. The 1454 weighed seven tons and produced 145 horsepower from the turbocharged version of the engine fitted to the 1184. In 1978, the 1474 was superseded by the, superseded by the 1474 based on the Ford, sorry, I'll say that again, the 1454 was superseded by the 1474 based on the Ford 9700. This uh, was given a longer wheelbase and 149 brake horsepower before being operated to 153 horsepower when the base unit was changed to the TW20. The final model to be introduced by County was the whopping big 1884. That was a monster of a tractor. The Ford 401 engine, 401S engine was turbocharged and intercooled to develop 188 horsepower. This tractor was a giant in the field and was used by the largest of arable farms, weighing in 8 tonnes and costing nearly £30,000 at the time. That was in 1980. Uh, so it was a huge machine. But only about 20 were ever built by county uh, before county tractors ran into financial trouble. So they are a very, very, very rare machine. And in the last number of years, in the last 10, 15 years, um, county tractors, I suppose, have really come back into uh, into fame again with uh, collectors um, and with county groups around, obviously, around Ireland, especially. And in the UK, um, these things are well sought after. And it's the rarer ones uh, that the ones that were, they were built less of that are making the, the big money at the time. And when I say big money, I mean big money. So one of the downsides uh, compared to somewhat or similar models, uh, the tractors, they, they had a large turning circle and the power steering was pretty weak on it. Um, added to this, spare parts had become hard to find as the company is now out of business, obviously. So there are a few specialist uh, parts providers um, around Ireland and the UK. Uh, JP Wilson, I think, in Scotland. Um, I do recall in 2020 in the National Show Centre in Dublin, there was a, a county tractors gathering, a get together of the clubs. Uh, I think there was something like there was over 50 tractors, over over 50 county tractors at it. And at the show, the the current owner of the the county brand name, uh, Mark Osborne, he was at it and he was interviewed at it, and he's put a lot of effort into. Um, uh, sustaining the brand uh making parts available getting parts out there for them again um and it's great to see that that the heritage is being is being kept and that there are people out there the likes of michael hoy in dublin who has a fantastic collection of not just fords but massey ferguson's and john deere's and the work that goes into restoring these machines is just top notch and there's people all around uh not just ireland and the uk but all, all around the world that 
puts huge amount of effort into keeping these old tractors going and preserving some history. So yeah, County always also made uh, the unequal wheel sized uh, four wheel drive tractor. So production starts in 1968 with the, the 4,000 Ford, the 4,000 Ford, that was based on the Ford 4,000. The front axle was driven by a single prop shaft with this design. These tractors were built to offer our customers better headland maneuverability, although the traction capabilities were just not as good as the equal uh, wheeled machines. Production continued with the 6600 uh, for the 7600 for the 7700 for and the 7610 for county also made four wheel drive conversions for the likes of international and leyland tractors albeit in limited numbers the 634 all wheel drive was based on the international 634 and about 50 of these were made between 1969 and 1972 and these tractors produced 63 horsepower county tractors have become very collectible and have now began to rise significantly in value, with some of the less common models commanding high prices when put up for auction. And I do remember uh, in 20, I know there's been some recently as well, but in 2022 in particular, uh, a short nose 1474 um, county made 214,000 pounds sterling at Sheffield's auction in the UK. And that's a staggering amount of money when you consider uh, what it is, you know, uh, and how how old it is, how much it would have cost new. Um, but I'd love to know who who's buying them. It's obviously collectors, um, enthusiasts, people who are buying them as an investment, uh, because the chances of these machines going down in value is not much. As people out there willing to spend that sort of money, um, they they will hold their value and they will go up in value, and they are they are an investment. They're pretty safe money in the bank once they're looked after. And I, I recall seeing there recently a Ferguson 399T uh, in Sheffins as well. I think it was a three, or a 390T, it could have been a 390T uh, in Sheffins uh, with 6,000 hours on it, made 53,000 sterling roughly. Um, so, you know, that's crazy money when you think about it. But uh, look, at that's what they're making. If you have one, look after it, hang on to it, yeah. So I suppose with the rise of any of these companies, they're always, you know, we've seen the demise. So the decline of the county, the county company, the county name, uh, by 1983, as we'd said, the count, county was in financial trouble and went into receiver, receivership that February. The Shropshire dealer, David Gittins, formed a new company, County Tractors Limited, to buy the business. So County Tractors Limited, the new company, set about updating the range and update the top models to the new Ford TW series. Uh, spec skid units so they were all based around the Ford TW at that stage in 1983 county was sold to the Benson group and relocated to Nighttown in Wales Benson's built very few large machines but did build two for uh, BSC at Ravens Craig in Scotland being county 1884 models and they shut county down in 1990 so by this time, all the big brands offered their own high-powered machines with four-wheel drive or imported other makes into the UK and badged them on the licensing deals. Ford offering, obviously, the Steiger uh, agriculture, uh, you know, articulated agricultural tractor model as the, the Ford FW series. So we've seen the demise, obviously, around this time and even earlier of, uh, of the Doe, of Muir Hill, obviously, to 1200 Massey Ferguson, 1250 and roadless as well obviously and county so all these kind of bespoke companies were making very specific types of four-wheel drive tractors when you had ford coming along with their own systems and john deere and massey ferguson coming along with their own and you know it really just swamped their business it took over and there, was, there wasn't a business there for them anymore um so that was really it so yeah, look at uh, County. They had died out for a long time. They were still plodding along out there. They're, they're, they was, you know, still being used. Uh, they were forgotten about for a long, long time. But definitely within the last 10 years, they've made a serious revival. And people are hungry for them now. Um, I do think the internet has a lot to do with it, uh, with any of these uh, with any of these machines. Um, because you can go on YouTube. You can, you know, look at groups on Facebook and people out there looking at them and they're seeing them and you know they're, they're getting involved in groups and they're getting out and they're spending their money 
and I can tell you it's a better way of spending your money than uh, you know so, some other ways because you're not going to lose you could go out and buy a 50,000 euro car or pound car or whatever and uh, in five years time it might be worth 15 so you know uh, you're better off buying an old county or a mirror hill than you are a tesla maybe um that's just my thoughts anyway so look that's it for this week guys uh, it is a short video as i said i spoke a little bit more in the first one but obviously uh, it fell on deaf ears because nobody would be able to hear it so that's it uh, thanks for watching i'll see everybody again next week i'll be back with a little bit of a different video just especially for the time of year that it is um so that'll be coming up next week so be sure to check in and uh, don't forget if you haven't liked please like the video please subscribe if you haven't done yet and uh, drop us a comment if you have any connection with county if you remember them if you drove them or if you're a mechanic working on them you don't have anything with them uh, please i'd love to hear from you and all of my other viewers would love to hear from you as well because I know I have a lot of viewers uh, that look down through all the comments and comment on other people's comments as well. So, uh, yeah, that's it for this week. Thanks a million, and I'll see everybody next week.